Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. Of course, there are speculations as to what will happen in court tomorrow as far as the uh, election issue is concerned. The famous case, uh, the most important case of uh, the nine uh, judges now having become a three-member bench. Uh, what happens, of course, we don't know. but. There are some things that are now clear. One, that the issue seems a controversial one. One. Two, that at this time there is great division between political parties. It doesn't seem like things are headed in uh, the direction of any accord being reached when, of course, we are again hearing uh, uh, PTI and the former Prime Minister ask his people to come on the streets. Um, that kind of a scenario uh, where there is talk of uh, going perhaps um, against uh, in the three judges uh, and also at the same time um, when this is a very very important issue as far as the whole country is concerned as far as in the background of an economic crisis in the background of a crisis which your security situation clearly uh, enunciates um, all of that today on perspective we'll be talking about what kind of a development we can expect tomorrow all of that today i have with me zulfikar ali badar who is a spokesman uh, for bilabal bhutto zardari um, and uh, Barrister Yasser Latif Hamdani, who is a legal expert, thank you for being with us today. We also have with us Haris Azmat, who is an advocate of the Supreme Court, thank you for joining us today. And we have with us Asiya Nasir from the JUI um, F, thank you for joining us. G. Um, Yasser, yeah, like I was saying, you know, this is certainly what happens tomorrow. We don't know, but it certainly is a, is 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 a case that's extremely important, and it's a case which will have far-reaching consequences. Not today, but you know, not only today, but we will see in the future also. I mean, it's it's going to be a, a precedent for uh, a long, long time. How do you look at this generally, and what do you expect from uh, what happens tomorrow? First of all, I think uh, we are in a very dangerous moment mm. in this country system because you see, the government has said, the PDM coalition has said that they are going to boycott the proceedings. Now, I expect the Attorney General to walk in there and say that. Mm. You know, okay. that that's what, I mean, his instructions, I think, are going to be very clear. Okay. No more proceedings, they're going to say, we boycott the bench, three member bench. But what does that mean? Exactly. Now, mm. now that's where it gets dangerous. What we have is a situation where whatever the Supreme Court decides, constitutionally the executive authority is bound to follow. Okay. That's Article 190 of the Constitution. It's, it's, it's very clear. Okay. Now, uh, what happens when the government says, no, we don't want to? Mm. You know, what does that mean? Because to begin with, going back, stepping back a little, it is quite clear that the judgment, the original first March decision was 4-3, hmm. you know, because those dissenting notes would be counted, you know. Hmm. Now, that said, hmm. if the Supreme Court goes ahead and does this, hmm. and we've got, you know, the intervening sort of Kazi Faizisa's decision as well uh, in, in the middle, I still feel that given that there is a bench that is then it's a three member bench so it's it, it is uh, any like any other Supreme You think there's no there's there's no absolutely no chance of the CJ saying tomorrow that he is going to go for a larger bench Well that would be the best case scenario mm. he going with his you know if he decides to go for a full bench I think mm. given the Absolutely. And there is agreement by and large. I mean, of course, we also, PTI is also saying that they're okay with, with having exactly. a full bench. Exactly. And I, I don't think anyone's going to have a problem hmm. with a 17 member bench's uh, hmm. decision. Hmm. I think uh, the 17 member bench would be sort I, of. It's now 13, isn't it? Isn't it true that the, the actually uh, we have 13 uh, ju uh, judges in the Supreme Court at the time, right I now? Are there? I'm, I'm okay. I let me let me go to Har yeah. Haris and I'll come back to you. G Haris, can you hear me? Can hear you. I was just correcting. There are fifteen judges right now. Okay. The, there are two, the two strands is seventeen. Right now there okay. are fifteen. Uh, okay, F Haris. What are, in your opinion? I mean, the real. Uh, what, what is the big issue with with the CJ now going for a full bench? Well, that's an interesting question because. The big issue is that even if the CJ makes the full bench now, 
it won't be very fruitful because the majority of the judges have stated that this petition is not maintainable not because the elections shouldn't be held in 90 days they they believe that since the high court has taken cognizance of the matter the matter should be referred to the high court and the high court should decide the case in 3 days you see uh, the only now solution is one of the parties to give way and concede to the demand of the other side and when i say it, not the political parties it is the groups that are now so visible in the supreme court one group is or one set of judges is adamant on the fact that since the matter has been taken cognizance by the high court the matter should be referred there and the high court should decide the other group says that even Haris, there, is there is there any, on both okay sides. let me let me interject for one second is there any um, bar on the cj saying tomorrow for example exactly that that uh, you know let this is going let the high court decide do you think that's a possibility uh, absolutely the uh, because if 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 the if the cj gives way and you know there is a boycott and what is what is the issue here is not just this individual case it is the larger perception of the public which is eroding in the institution you see these judges they decide mm -hmm. the, the fate of people's lives and property every day so what if a, a person who's been sentenced to death goes out and say i don't uh, i don't agree with this order and takes the whole village to the police station mm -hmm. so this is very important as lawyers as a community as public at large in terms of the constitution article 189 whatever the supreme court is the last word we are happy we are not happy at times we lose very good cases before the supreme court but then we say maybe the supreme court maybe definitely the supreme court is right and we have to bow before the supreme court now the problem so is be, that it's not that there has to be a sanctity of the supreme court there has to be uh, you know a certain uh, there, there is a certain uh, clout there is a certain respect that has to be attached to the highest court of the land fair enough let me come back to you on that i'm going to go to asia ji asia can you hear me yes ma'am ma'am thank you very much for taking me thank you asia there is you know at this time it's not just one party that is saying that they you know at this time the supreme court is looking at the the pmln the pdm essentially saying that they are going to boycott the proceedings on the other hand you have a former prime minister uh who has taken to the streets numerous times and is again saying that uh, you know uh, if things don't happen his way after the dissolution of assemblies he has asked his people to again take to the streets so there are you know the supreme court is looking at these two things at this time should they at all fair in in the decision or you know um, i mean those are the practicalities at this time but not necessarily the legalities right uh yes parof i think that uh, uh, in the given uh, situation and scenario and the environment which have been created in the country mm. of favoritism of biasness of uh, uh, of uh, uh, means that uh, only uh, means of partiality by the court uh, and uh, i think that in the presence of the of the current chief justice mm. and two of his colleagues who are supporting uh, only one mm. political party because one political party and the former prime minister he has uh, taken uh, the court as hostage i think that this is not the fair decision which the court is giving and in the given mm -hmm. scenario i think that P pdma has taken the right decision to boycott this uh, uh, the, the, the judgment by the supreme court hmm. you 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 agree with their decision you agree with the yes, government's I, I, decision I, to boycott yes i agree with the decision of the pdm with the government's decision to boycott i think that they should how can they go uh, um, and in negotiation and in dialogue with a person who uh, who who is a, who was selected who is handpicked and who is who is being given all the support by the court but as here firstly the question is is it possible for, uh, to boycott a legal decision and what does it mean when you say that you want want to boycott um, a legal decision that comes out because there because there is the trust deficit because there is no confidence because uh, uh, we doubt that uh, uh, the, the decision the judgment will which will come by by the court mm. will be biased and which we we will be partial so i think that uh, now the chief justice and two of his alliance he has made, uh, made a big controversy 
and he has made all this uh, procedure of elections so controversial. And I think that all the constitutional bodies they should uh, abide to their constitutional word. So I think that it's a very clear mandate of the election commission to administer the elections and to announce the election day. Okay, Asya, let me let me come back to you on that note. As Yasir, the same question to you. Firstly, whether boycotting is an option at all, and what does it mean when you say that you're going to boycott it? Are, are they not going to accept the decision, not follow through with it? Um, are they are they legally bound to do so? I mean, they're legally bound to follow what the Supreme Court says. Hmm. And there can't be two opinions about it. Um, hmm. You just can't decide that so and so is, we don't like so and so so therefore their decision is not acceptable to us but isn't it true that when you don't when you don't have even uh, in normal proceedings and correct me if i'm wrong if you don't have confidence in a particular a judge of uh, whether the high court supreme court you can of course voice that and generally um, you know there is they either recuse themselves or step away that's also part of the way normal things are done right it is and then in that case the responsibility would lie with the chief justice and with the bench okay. if they want to recuse themselves or not hmm. that would be a decision that would be in their discretion Okay. Uh, so I, I think that that is clear but if, if the proceedings go on and whatever decision comes uh, the government and all executive authorities under the constitution are duty bound to follow hmm. uh, that decision. Okay. So I, uh, it's it's a like I said, it's a grave constitutional crisis right now. What happens? I think ultimately, and I'm you know this is given our sad and sordid history of these disputes. Ultimately, it'll come down to whether or not the executive authorities, and by by executive authority, I mean all the arms of the federal government, as it were, mm. are ready to actually go ahead and do it. Mm. You know, so that would actually come down to the people who can enforce the will, and, I, and I, whether they are able to do it also. And exactly. and do you think that that will also figure in the decision? It's possible that it might, considering that you know they have voiced. Uh, very vocally said that they're unable to do this at this time as far as you know the night for follow the 90 day period is concerned let me go to Harris Harris is it possible that that the Supreme Court may come to you know some sort of middle ground of course it's not their mandate but we've seen the CJ say again and again that perhaps the, the political parties should come to some sort of an agreement there should be talk of course at this time it doesn't look like it with one party saying you know with, with the government primarily the PDM saying they're going to boycott and uh, the former Prime Minister Imran Khan Sahib saying that he wants to come uh, on the wants his people to come on the streets again in that kind of a scenario isn't isn't it i mean of course the the supreme court has hinted that there should be talks there should be some um, you know leeway from both sides but that doesn't seem like it's going to happen uh, i think that's a, a very valuable suggestion the only way out is a middle ground and the middle ground should not be between the political parties. The middle ground should be between the Supreme Court judges themselves. They use, they must show a common front and uh, and how that middle ground can come up with is a full court, not in on the judicial side, but on the administrative side, where all 15 judges uh, sit and resolve these issues one way or the other. Because, you know, the impression that is giving the public is quite damaging to the institute in the long run. So uh, your uh, middle ground is the only solution. And probably the best way forward is to maybe direct the high court to decide these matters within three days, as was written in Justice Mansoor Ali Shah's judgment. All mm -hmm. judges having most judges on the other side with the dispute in 4-3 is let, let, let the, let the uh, high court judges decide it within three days and let's see what they say so the matter has already been prolonged for so long what what difference does three days make the matter could be resolved within the next week but as yasser Aris has pointed also, out also pending is the legislation on suomoto which uh, you know of course uh, is nearly i mean the government of course has legislated the parliament has legislated on it and it's only waiting a few formalities that also um, i believe will land up in in the supreme court and and there will be uh, you know consequences of that also how are you looking at that well that's that's also very interesting because that's mm. another quagmire because when the matter will land in the supreme court the interesting mm. aspect would be which bench will hear that petition? Mm. Will the will the bench 
as per the new legislation will hear it or will the chief justice will form the bench because mm-hmm. uh, there is a, there is a clear authority there is an atzaz essence case 89 i believe 89 supreme court which says the legislation cannot be suspended by the court it can be struck down but mm-hmm. the operation so that will be also very interesting will we form the bench as we do right now the prerogative mm-hmm. of the chief justice because that that will be very pivotal but if you mm-hmm. ask me personally i have strong reservations in terms of the legislation i believe that's the power of the supreme court and article 191 is also very clear and that's the precedent which has been followed the supreme court rules 1980 as they stand today have been formed by the full bench full court of the supreme court mm. so uh, if you if you given further appeals that is uh, that can only be done by amendment of the constitution and not by a simple legislation in my humble opinion but there are of course many views on that and of course the government strongly believes otherwise but but if that happens uh, isn't it true even if that happens or it does in the point is it's been uh, in uh, you know the issue has been a long standing one like you said it is a question of opinion and there are two schools of thought even the lawyers are very much divided uh, whether the power should be curtailed whether the power should be defined all of those things i mean there's no denying that it's been it's not about the current um, you know chief justice of the supreme court it's been going on for a while right and there has been uh, no bar on this power absolutely and it's been a long standing demand of the profession as an advocate of the supreme court for 7 years now there are certain mm-hmm. things in the new legislation which are absolutely fantastic and amazing for instance mm-hmm. when you file a case before the supreme court and it's an urgent matter you need a stay the case cannot be fixed for months mm-hmm. the new legislation says whenever the case will be filed within uh, with an urgent application it will be fixed within 2 weeks that is a long standing demand of the legal professionals that our cases cannot be fixed the mm. other issue is that in a review case you, uh, the existing rules say that you cannot change the counsel these mm. legislations allow you to change the counsel you know you can have you this is your last dice the uh, last mm. roll of the dice and you can have a, any any counsel of your choice for the review but it's mm. it's just the timing and how this legislation has come in is 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 questionable otherwise the legislation makes perfect sense uh, mm-hmm. uh, and i agree with the absolute contents i i would have been really happy had this legislation been made by the full bench of the supreme court itself okay fair enough let me come back to asia you know barring the legal side of things at this time um, in a kind of environment where you know politically we are you know facing of course the kind of situation is it's in front of you we are also economically things are extremely extremely difficult um why can't the government you know okay if if the former prime minister is being adamant if he's being difficult whatever you want to call it why doesn't the government make an effort of course there were also reports that there were some talks could you i mean is it isn't it true that perhaps the order of the day is that there should be more effort towards some sort of a uh, dialogue which can and you know some sort of agreement that doesn't uh necessitate going down this route where you have people coming on the streets again and you know ensuring that there is again um a potential uh, you know for the, for for no no stability in the country uh, yes uh, yes uh, yes our your question is very important i think that uh, your question goes both ways it's not only the government who should think that uh the disturbance in the country the, in the given scenario when inflation is uh globally raising uh day by day when the country is facing numerous challenges when uh and uh, recent census is going on in the in, in the such conditions i think that it's not only the government but both the side the government and the opposition side they both should think in the uh, larger interest of the country i think that uh, uh bringing uh large uh, number of people on the roads bringing multitudes of people uh, doing all sort of these negative uh, things which have been going in pakistan they are not in the favor of stable pakistan they will not give any political stability to pakistan it's my personal opinion i i think that it's uh, you're very really right it's the government should and on the other side the uh, the uh, the pti 
uh, should and the former prime minister they should also think about it that they uh, they should also i think accept the decisions taken by the court and look, we have what we have seen and experienced that that when it comes in their favor they accept it but when it goes against them they uh, they they start bringing people on the roads they start creating turmoil in the country and they start doing all sort of illegal or i think that uh, uh, things which they should so i think that uh, there should be fair enough uh, uh, uh that that level playing field given to all and i think that the courts either is courts is the government they should i think that to go by the constitution and i think the today uh, the larger responsibility comes on the supreme court and comes to the chief justice now the key is up to the chief justice that he should pre- prove himself to be non partial to uh, to uh, end all this turmoil and end this all these contradictions going on in the country right fair enough let me come back to you yeah sir what do you expect okay you know like even haris is saying he's saying you know perhaps the legislation was needed for a long time and we've t- talked about this before those issues need to be addressed whether they happen in this manner or another manner the issue at this time is again that uh, you know we have a former prime minister who's dissolved the assemblies who's acted in a certain way to achieve a certain goal and for him that seems to be the elections and he believes whether that's true or not that his popularity um uh, the results of the elections will echo the popularity the government has also said that it's not necessarily true that he will accept the results if that doesn't happen mm. the point is in this kind of a scenario what what options are are legally open to the court you know they they have been pushed into a corner would mm. you agree they certainly been uh, pushed into a corner and i think um, well i think the best option is what haris said i i believe that it should go back to the high courts hmm. uh, as was uh, suggested and as was ordered by uh, justice mansoor ali shah i think uh, the high courts had already taken cognizance of hmm. this and therefore this should have been decided in the high courts hmm. uh, ultimately that's the only way out of it because i I'm, i'm at least i would be willing to bet on the fact that uh, the cjp is not going to uh, get a full bench hmm. he's not going to go for that so i hmm. i don't see that happening so I, so more co- matlab of course then that then then a larger crisis would follow when you are looking at a political parties that that again is saying come on the streets and and that there should be you know or or even not accepting whatever the supreme court comes up with exactly and i think that's um, right now the kind of constitution crisis that we face obviously there have been uh, parallels that have been dis- mm. uh, uh, that have been you know sort of drawn with uh, 1997 and mm. that sort of thing mm. but i think the constitutional crisis that we see right now uh, is unprecedented mm. uh, because what we have um, at least as far as i can imagine because what we have is a clear uh, standoff between <coughs> two executive uh, two uh, branches of government right mm. judicial and executive they're going to go at each other and unless of course the executive does what the constitution says that that's follow the supreme court but then again going back one whether one, that's possible or not that's not possible mm. uh, i i believe that ultimately mm. and you know it's it's i know it's a uh, it's a cynical thing to say do you think it's possible sorry let me interject here do you think it's possible for for there for us to go back to a scenario where uh, where uh, the situation is res- uh, the status quo is reversed so to speak as far as uh, with respect to the the assemblies uh, of kp and uh, punjab is as that possibility by the supreme court as a decision th- that that you know because the government has been talking about whether there is the legality of uh, the dissolution itself do you think mm. it's a possibility to go go to restore them yes yeah no i haven't uh, i haven't thought of that honestly okay. i i okay. think uh, i think that would be uh, that's highly unlikely i mm. think too much water has passed under the bridge for mm. that to actually happen um i would imagine that that would be a legal impossibility even i i don't uh, i don't know how they're going to go back and say uh that the dissolution if itself. the dissolution itself was not legal mm-hmm. then of course anything that follows through but it was legal unfortunately okay you and know, that's been decided you're saying by the I, court i i think that you think it's legal i i think it's really i mean they okay, had okay fair enough let me let me ask uh, haris also haris uh, can you hear me i'm here 
Haris, this is, is, is there a possibility at all? Because, you know, this is just for the sake of argument at this time. Is it a possibility? Because, you know, this is also something that is being talked about. Um, whether it's, a, it's possible or not, I don't know. But what is your legal opinion on this as far as, yeah, because, you know, um, the government is saying again and again <laughs> that why were they dissolved at the behest of one man? And that is the question for them. So is it possible to go back or no? Uh, that's a that's also an interesting debate because this is precisely the question that was raised by the election commission of Pakistan and the other political parties in their intra court appeal before the high court. One mm -hmm. of the grounds when when a single bench gave the judgment of an election within 90 days, one of the grounds mm -hmm. in the appeal was that the election the assembly's dissolution was not correct. And okay. out of the nine nine uh, judges which were constituted on the first day. Justice Atar Manila, in his short note, has also raised this ground, saying okay. therein that we will also examine this question. But mm. uh, because the bench was dissolved, this question mm. was never examined. But this is mm. this was also a live question before the at least before the High Court. Uh, mm. uh, there is, there are no uh, uh, there are no simple answers to that. Of course, uh, this is, but this also what 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 this does is this o this only deepens the crisis that we're already in, hmm. uh, and you know, we, and then another crisis that is coming up with is that whether the uh, the caretaker government can go beyond the ninety day period hmm. because the hmm. constitution is also hmm. pretty categorical hmm. about their their life. What happens after the 90 day period? Can the election commission give them extension? Do they have to come back to the Supreme to a court to get an extension? Can there be an extension in the first place? So you see, uh, it, it gets complicated by the day. Okay, fair enough. Let me come back to you. We have with us Zulfikar Ali Badr. Thank you for joining us. He's spokesman for Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. Ji, uh, Zulfikar sahab, why doesn't, you know, of course there is, you are very much part of the PDM at this time and and why doesn't you know at this time the only solution to this increasing constitutional crisis seems to be some kind of dialogue um, it, it has there do you think that 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 there has been sufficient attempts or there has been you know sufficient uh, uh, thought put into this to to avert this kind of uh, crisis Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. thank you for inviting me to your show. Uh, I just, uh, coming back to your question, I want to take back on the point when the uh, PDM was created. It was the brainchild of Mr. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. So he was of the opinion that there should be a platform where all the parties should come together and build consensus on, on a national agenda. And same goes and after a year, the PDP was out of PDM and then later on after a year, PPP and PDM, they joined hands and they did a vote of no confidence and as a result uh, of vote of no confidence, a national unity government was formed uh, in the, in, from the National Assembly uh, with, with the constitution and following of law. So, my point is that when Mr. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari came up with this idea that consensus should be built and all the stakeholders and political parties, political forces should be brought on one page, one platform and let's have a dialogue and keeping our uh, differences on one side, our egos manifest on one side, that before they were fighting with each other on the grounds in the elections and again after the uh, completion of the term. Again, we are going to go and fight with each other, the parties which are sitting together in national unity government. So my, what I am trying, the point I am trying to make is, hmm. right now, the need of the R is to build consensus and bring all the stakeholders on hmm. ground. What hmm. PDM is doing, what PDM wants and what PDM is doing, that they want to bring all the political parties and stakeholders on one point and take out the uh, the problems, the economic, political instability and they want to... Zulfiqar sahab, the only person who really needs to come 
on the table with you guys who really needs to to sit down with you at this point and who is not doing so it seems is the pti so why is there this inability uh, to get the former prime minister to play ball in the interest of the country in the interest of of uh, parliament um, you know parliamentary democracy in the interest of of getting things to go along in our economic interests also i was coming to this point it was not it is not the inability of the government or the political mm. leaders who are sitting in the government mm. it is a political immaturity of mr khan that is mm. not letting him go on the table of dialogue so mm. once he wants and he have manifested that he wants to take out pakistan and the people of pakistan out of this economic and political crisis so he will have to come on the table unconditionally but he is not coming on the table be, be, being a you know a, what do you call a, a politically immature person because he is not using his mind political mind that is very important nowadays because uh, hmm. whatever is happening the, the constitutional crisis have arose this is because the chief it is the duty of the chief justice he is the chief of all the justices in the in the supreme court of pakistan it is his duty that he has to sacrifice and talk things out with all the honorable judges in the supreme court and make them sit uh, whether they have a difference of opinion or not but they have to sit together and sort out the issue because this is not a problem of Uh, the only judges of supreme court this is a But problem for the fp simple father sahab father sahab when you Pakistan. when you ask let me interject please when you ask your people you know when you ask the judiciary they they say that they are loath to 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 get into uh, political questions and they always you know they they have i think passed this comment now and again that these political issues should be settled between political parties and they don't want to become a part of this uh you know political uh, whether it's one sided or not or you know becoming a part of this political debate um and ideally of course it would be the right right uh, way to deal with things to come to some sort of an agreement but you are saying that it is inability of the pti and and the leader to to at all you know see things the way that that, that they are they seem to be headed at this time actually i agree i personally agree to this point that every problem should be sorted between the political parties and their hmm. leadership hmm. and hmm. parliament is being a uh, platform in this country and mm. this should be sorted out in parliament among the people mm. among the leaders of different mm. parties but mm. unfortunately when one of the leaders when he is not willing when he was in power or when he went out of power and he is not willing to sit on the table to sort out the issues then nobody can sort out these problems this okay, can be enough. only addressed so the problems can be addressed when you sit on a table of dialogue and have a dialogue whether you have a difference of opinion or not you have to sit on the table and this is i think uh, what uh, one of the honorable judges have said that problem these problem should not come to the supreme court i personally feel that this should be this should happen this would have been the ideal situation in pakistan but unfortunately for every problem which is coming and there is a difference of opinion between the parties we are going to the go to the supreme court and unfortunately right now the honorable judges have given their mind and uh, all these political forces have seen and anticipated uh, the likely decision which is going to come in couple of days right fair enough let me let me come back to you Haris uh, it's true that you know again the same as as a lawyer we have seen the supreme court overall you know whether you talk about the high court or the supreme court say again and again that they don't want to be made a party they don't want to answer these political questions but this is a case which you know is is a classic classic example of issues that are not legal only i mean they have potentially political consequences they have you know it's it's a classic mix of everything and to be able to to separate those issues seems rather difficult at this time um and the supreme court also uh, is is kind of you know in the middle of it for them to offer the solution of talks you know is is not strictly uh, the normal 
but it seems to be the only route but what is the way to avoid it for 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 the court also you know whichever side they go it seems like it's going to be difficult for them regardless of what they decide unless you know they decide for go decide to go for a full bench which i think there's agreement on largely um you're absolutely correct uh, the supreme court is now you know as they say stuck between a rock and a hard place at times literally uh, these are political questions which the supreme court should not be asked to answer mm. and as mm. you've rightly pointed out that mm. wherever the supreme court decides one political party will be unhappy or one set of political parties will be unhappy mm. and this brings the reputation of the supreme court under the radar and under the public eye if mm. you ask me as a lawyer personally mm. i've appeared before all these judges and these are all judges of impeccable integrity even the three member bench which the government plans to boycott these are some of the most fantastic judges if you read their judgments mm. you know you mm. see there are 200 around 200 judges in the high courts across the country out of those 200 these are the best of the best that we have in the country and under normal circumstances under normal allah ditta versus the state case nobody can even think about boycotting the proceedings mm. so it's very unfortunate and because of i i hope our democracy can develop one day where these issues can be resolved in the parliament and not in the supreme court and these are not strictly legal questions and this brings but, the but entire it comes down to this right system. it comes but haris and yasir both because you know as as lawyers it comes down to this that Allah that I think Haris has mentioned cannot can neither buy court nor go to the streets. He can. So so he can't. Mm -hmm. So it's it's it's. And really if Allah that the boy courts, he he will be issued a contempt notice, and Allah that hmm. will be in jail for six hmm. months. And even if he takes to the streets, I doubt that you know it's going to have any any ramifications on the verdict that that comes out against him. So in this case, the pressure tactic uh, for for example. the the opposition at this time for them to say that you know would you say yasir that it's been working till now it hasn't been working i, don't <coughs> think, I so. think and that's uh, that's a problem but i'm also very concerned about what happens next if say tomorrow there's a boycott and then there's a decision hmm. and ultimately there is a contempt notice because that's you know sort of so hmm. if there is contempt hmm. and the prime minister gets disqualified hmm. what happens then that's that's probably one of the things that is within the realm of possibility right now hmm. so i don't know uh the situation again i i believe the <coughs> the ideal thing would be to go back to the high courts just send it back so it's uh, you think i mean it's probably going to be a moment for for the supreme court to take uh, you know the 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 larger to be the larger person here mm -hmm. and probably take a step back and send it either back to the high court or go for a larger bench larger bench yes of course i i i feel that going back to the high courts would be the best thing because mm. uh, that would also kind of end the debate on suma motion and what has the high court initially said in this case has they have they haven't they followed the 90 day period well they uh, right now whatever they decide hmm. i mean that, that doesn't but matter but where do things stand with the high court till now well uh, as far as i know they hmm. they obviously when you look at the constitution it is going to go in hmm. that direction i mean this is a hmm. pretty sort of but it is ultimately let the high court decide hmm. let it come up Mm. and that's the fear isn't it and the fear mm. is that then that would get inordinately delayed when it comes back obviously there's a due process that goes afterwards so i think that's the fear that is why they want so if it goes to the high court and whatever happens the one of the parties will take it invariably up to the exactly. supreme court again exactly and that delay uh was uh, what the the supreme court has said that they were trying to circumvent exactly. is it is it that in your opinion? i believe that's what they were trying to do and i think that's why the pti for example wants the suo motor proceedings hmm. to continue hmm. and to be to for it to be decided at the supreme court but level but the suo motor is now subject to a lot of controversiality not because of the government but because of the the the, the uh, benches that have have exactly. changed because of the judges themselves Yes and I I think uh, much of this could have been avoided right I mean we could have had benches I I don't understand why the senior puni judge is not uh, on these benches has never been on these benches that's that's one of those major question marks on the whole thing the exercise mm. has been uh, lopsided mm. 
hmm. uh, in that sense. So I hmm. feel that um, if there was a fairer constitution of benches, and, and that goes back to sort of, because I, I see, uh, just to sort of uh, talk about what we were talking about, the, the legislation that's been done, hmm. I, th I think that the, so the constitution of Pakistan doesn't talk about uh, the chief justice exercising authority. Hmm. The constitution of Pakistan talks about the Supreme Court and Supreme Court is not chief justice alone and he doesn't have unchecked okay. power. Fair so I, I feel that ultimately things must go where and, and I think with, with what the decision was in uh, uh, with uh, Mansoor Ali Shah Saab's judgment, mm, mm. I think s something along those lines has to be developed in our uh, jurisprudence. Right, fair enough. Let me uh, go to Asiya. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Ji, Asiya, your quick comments. Unfortunately, we are completely out of time. Uh, thank you very much, Maruf, for the last comment. Actually, I, I, I was just listening to the discourse, and I must say that on my personal note, that uh, I will agree with what Harris, uh, Harris is saying that I think that the best option is go, uh, to go to the High Court uh, again. I think that will be the best option. But the thing is that uh, uh, the only solution which we think to any problem or issue here in Pakistan is dialogue. Yes, there should be dialogue, but the problem here is that there's a mindset existing in our country which thinks that uh, only the, uh, the development of uh, uh, democracy only lies that when uh, lies in one party coming uh, into reign or one party coming into power. So I think this is a very wrong thought or a very wrong mindset. Yes, if the dialogue takes place and if that one political party which is now in opposition, they think that only they are right and only the right decision will be which will be in their favor, I think that this is, uh, this is very wrong. This will be very wrong for the country. So I think that the only option I think which is left now is to go back to the High Court. So I agree with Harris. Thank you very much, Maro. Thank you so much for being with us. Zulfiqar Ali Badr Saab, thank you for joining us. Barrister Yasir Latif, thank you for joining us today. Harris Azmat, thank you for being with us. Asiya Nasir, thank you for joining us today. Of course, it certainly remains to be seen what happens tomorrow. But perhaps in the interests of uh, democracy, in the interests of uh, the country and its situation, where unfortunately we are unable to see an opposition that uh, will sit with the government, uh, whether in the interest of the country or not. Perhaps uh, the Supreme Court will see uh, that there seems to be, at this time, only uh, one or two solutions to the problem. Of course, what happens, we'll know tomorrow. Let's hope that we will see a solution uh, that will be acceptable to all parties um, and by um, either by, uh, boycotting proceedings or going to streets um, are options that any all parties will not exercise. Thank you so much for joining us today on Facebook.